different. And each patient is having a lot of individual variation. The drug is different, and some patient is snoring after morphine, they are going into deep sleep, and there is not having any effect after morphine, single tablet. So that differentiation has to be understood properly. And, and uh, uh, European Association of Palliative Care has given this approach, that this pyramid approach, the analgesic is one part of the treatment, one component of the treatment. Even anti-cancer treatment, surgery can be given, radiotherapy also reduces pain in bone metastasis, and chemotherapy also sometimes reduces the pain. Behavioral therapy, surgery, and somebody having severe lymphedema, if you give a sling and just a support, that also reduces pain. That cannot be done by morphine or tablets. The support will give the uh, pain relief. And there is a simple approach, WHO letter, which was given in 1984, and this is just working on a simple premise, the pain is less or mild, just paracetamol, if the pain is severe, morphine. So this is a simple approach of intensity of pain, based on uh, opioid or NSAID or what should be given. So it is a tablet treatment, based on intensity of pain. That is simple classification, simple guideline for a general practitioner to treat pain. It can be used in any other situation also. In post-operative pain also you can use this same situation. And certainly, adjuvant should be given, like if you are prescribing morphine, always like that it should be given. If you are writing NSAIDs, you should always write the proton pump inhibitor or, or antacid, so it should be given. And WHO letter, of course, can, you can treat successfully 70 to 90 percent of pain nicely. There are, there are studies to tell that it can be, so, so all the cancer pain patients can be nicely treated with oral tablets. That message should go after this talk. That there is no need for injection, there are no need for going big therapies. Just simple painkillers should be able to treat 70 to 90 percent patients. And they are given by the mouth, by the clock, tailored to the individual needs, attention to the details. Simple things and you can treat across the table 70 to 90 percent of patients. And this is a nice article in 2011 in Clinical Oncology and what about WHO letter, validation of WHO letter, what goes beyond. So certainly there are limitations for that and we will discuss later on. And this is our own analysis that in our uh, pain clinic what we are doing and we have analyzed our about 500 patients and uh, we have audited them that there was a wrong frequency given in so many patients. Wrong dose was given wrong frequency was given, laxatives were not given. So about uh, these many patients, uh, laxatives were not given. So we are auditing everything, that how many wrong prescriptions were there, how many patients were not given antacids. So all these things are going on to audit. And morphine is of course the gold standard. Uh, about 70 to 90 percent patient can successfully be treated with using oral morphine. And it is available in tablet, slow release tablet, solutions, injections, suppositories. So many forms are available. And global consumption of morphine is 5.4 milligram. Global average consumption of the world is 5.4. Our consumption is just 0 0.08 milligram. So one-tenth of the global consumption. Last year's uh, 2011's consumption of India of morphine was 120 kg for whole India. Our uh, data memorial permit is 18 kg. And uh, INCV, International Narcotic Control, told India that you should have been consuming 900 kg, uh, you have just consumed 120 kg. So that tells our poor pain health. And biggest challenge, that is why of the future is opioid availability. And this is the uh, main emphasis, that you should ask for morphine, you should have morphine in these hosp big hospitals, and your patient should be getting morphine. And patches are also available if the patient is having vomiting, patient is having intestinal obstruction, and patient is uh, having oral tumors where tablets are not useful, cannot be given, impracticable, certainly you can, if the patient can afford, of course. And there are other delivery systems also in nasal sprays are available, and lollipops are also available, and various forms of other novel methods can be used. And these are the two burst uh, syndromes, bone metastasis pain and uh, neuropathic pain. They are treated differently, bone metastasis, you have to have radiotherapy shot, that cost too much, single shot and gives pain relief for months together. So there morphine will not be working too much. And then neuropathic pain certainly you have to have anti-convulsant and anti-depressants for treatment. 
Here the NSAIDs and morphine is not good for neuropathic pain. And these are the other adjuvant drugs, which are not primarily analgesics, but work as analgesics. And the, all these classes of the drugs, which are excellent for these situations. And this was one of the patients who was having vertebral collapse. And this was cementoplasty was then, and later on she was walking on both feet. She was bed bound for many months, and she was running in the house on the four limbs like a monkey, because there was a very big uh, this dehiscence and. Uh, patient was having severe pain on a standing, gravity dependent pain, mechanical pain. So such pains cannot be treated by morphine. You have to have a stability of the spine. And sometimes we use nerve blocks to kill those nerves which are causing pain. And these are the, some of the tumors, oral tumors, where we can just put needle and put alcohol or phenol to destroy mandibular nerve, maxillary nerve. And we can use cilia plexus block for upper abdominal tumors. A lot of pancreas, stomach, gallbladder. Cell cancer. So, in conclude, the cancer pain which is not relieved versus further cancer burden. If the cancer cannot be cured, at least pain can be cured. That is the message to our patients. We always give and our, of course, axiom is that comfort always. Relief of pain should be basic human right. In Europe and America, they have already gone ahead on that. But when we will go in India, where morphine is not available, what to talk of these basic rights? when morphine is not available to them. Treat pain from the diagnosis till end, that should be our aim. And uh, there should not be any stigma to that, if I give morphine, that will hasten the death. So that should not go in the mind. It is not causing any compli complications. It, 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 there is no question of any addiction after morphine. It doesn't produce any psychological dependence. Patient will not go on asking for morphine to enjoy those side effects. They are taking the morphine for treatment of pain. So that should be given. Instill hope and be empathetic to them. That, that should be always. Always cancer uh, imbibes that now I am going to die and all cynical and pessimistic things. But if you instill hope in the patient, there is a life after that and whatever days are there, we will keep you pain free. That patient also becomes happy. So thank you very much. Patient should die in this home like this among the patients. And this is the, the picture taken by me in the Glasgow Museum. I like this very much. And this is both with the palliative care. So patients should die in home. I mean, Ahmed is the family and uh, just talking to the children and all that. So he goes uh, really to the great heavens. Thank you very much.